Hi, my name is Eric, and in today's video, we're gonna be comparing Wealthfront versus Betterment. We're gonna be discussing a lot of items in this video to help you decide which of these robo-advisors best suits your needs. But before we get to all of that, I have a piece of trivia for you. I want you to guess what percentage of people think they're an above average driver. I'm gonna get back to this answer in a little bit and explain why the answer is important when it comes to investing. Before we get started, here's a quick table of contents of what we'll be covering in this video, comparing Wealthfront versus Betterment. At the end of this video, you'll better understand these services and what suits your financial needs best. Let's start off by talking about Wealthfront. Before turning its focus to wealth management, Wealthfront was founded in 2008 as a mutual fund analysis company called Kaching. Wealthfront is what's called a robo-advisor investment service and are a type of financial advisor that requires only moderate to minimal human involvement to provide investment management or financial advice. The financial advice they provide is based on mathematical rules called algorithms. Even if you're not completely familiar with how algorithms work, you experience them every day from what shows get shown in your Netflix home screen, which was Bill Burr for me last night, to what YouTube results are shown when searching for something like Betterment versus Wealthfront. Software then executes the algorithms and eliminates the need for a human to provide financial advice. It also eliminates some of the mistakes a human may be prone to due to being an emotional investor. You and I are both human and that means we're prone to mistakes caused by emotional decision making. A good recent example of this would be someone who has invested in the S&P 500 index during the fourth quarter of 2018. They would have experienced a 13.55% loss in their portfolio. Well, the emotional investor gets twitchy and decides to get out and cut their losses. But the S&P 500 index had its biggest first quarter gain in 2019 since 1998, going back 21 years. The emotional investor would have lost out on 13.65% returns during that three month stretch. A robo advisor doesn't have feelings. It's not bailing on an index fund because the Twitter verse is saying the world is coming to an end. Let's look at another emotional investing example. So let's say you have a friend who is an investor and he's giving you stock tips at the water cooler at work. He's not a twitchy investor like we just talked about, but he believes he's a financial fortune teller. I think we all know someone like this with a hot stock tip or even worse, cryptocurrency tip. Well, let's go back to our question I asked at the beginning of the video on driving ability. This is where I asked what percentage of people believe they're an above average driver. It turns out 90% of people believe they're an above average driver, when in reality, only 49% of people could be above average. Hopefully my math checks out there. I'm sure people will let me know in the comments of this video if it doesn't. This tendency to believe we're above average is a well-established bias in psychological studies. It has a few nicknames, but my favorite is the better than average effect because it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, the reason I bring this up is that one of the biggest dangers investors face is their own confidence or belief that they're an above average investor. That confidence can lead to poor decisions. For example, the dot-com boom and bust was largely built on speculation and hype. Financial advisors that were swept up into the buyer's frenzy cost their clients a lot of money. Funny side note, Warren Buffett was repeatedly called the dinosaur for staying away from the dot-com investments. It's humbling, but chances are we're about average and prone to emotional errors when it comes to investing. Besides relatively low fees, one of the biggest positive of robo-advisors is the lack of emotion. You're never going to convince an algorithm on why these dot-com stocks are going to be huge winners. It just looks at the data and makes data-driven decisions. Now, I just mentioned the low fees. If you've never read The Boggleheads Philosophy on Investing, I highly recommend it. It's 10 investing principles you must know to get started in investing, and I'll link to it in the description below. It's inspired by the late, great Jack Bogle, who was the founder of Vanguard and a pioneer for low-fee index investing. One of the 10 investment philosophies to keep in mind is to keep your costs low. At the end of the day, you can't control the markets, but you can control your fees. Currently, both Wealthfront and Betterment fees start in an annual 0.25% advisory fee. Let's take a look at how that compares to a financial advisor. When I was younger, and let's be honest, dumber, I mistakenly worked with a financial advisor who suggested my wife invest in an annuity in her 403B retirement account that carried a 1.18% advisory fee on top of the 1.04% fund fee. It makes me sick thinking we were paying 2.22% in just fees. Now, if those numbers don't make you sick, let me explain down to the penny why it should. Now let's have fun with this little tool over at NerdWallet that can compare different investment scenarios based solely on fees. So this is a fun tool from NerdWallet and what you can do here is you can start with your initial investment amount and I put zero and let's say that we're gonna be aggressive and put in $10,000 a year for 25 years at a rate of return of 7%. 
the expense ratio of fund one is 1.18, which is what my financial advisor was charging. Expense ratio of fund two is 0.25%, which is what Wealthfront and Betterment start at. Now, if we calculate this and go down, you can see the after fee investment value of fund one, the one with the higher fee is 521,847 compared to 599,481. So just this little bit of difference in fees over 25 years uh, would add up to over 77,000 in savings if you used Wealthfront or Betterment and had the same exact returns compared to using an advisor. So when a financial advisor bashes robo-advisors, it's because they realize that this industry is out to eat its steak dinner by charging breakfast diner fees. When you see your financial advisor driving a black BMW SUV in your local coffee parking lot, they're doing it with your investment returns. If that seems like an oddly specific reference, it's because that's what my ex-advisor drives. I may sound bitter, but to be honest, it's all part of the learning experience, and it's better to learn these things today rather than tomorrow. Now let's dive deeper on fees. Wealthfront does not charge any fees for their cash account, nor do they charge any account opening fees, trading commission fees, withdraw or account closing fees, or account transfer fees. The expense ratio embedded in the ETFs and mutual funds you may own is the only other fee they charge. The sole expense ratio Wealthfront earns is the 0.25% charge for the Wealthfront Risk Parity Mutual Fund. That can represent up to 20% of a portfolio. Wealthfront 529 account fees work a little differently, ranging from 0.42% to 0.46% per year. For those clients who reside in Nevada, their advisory fee is only incurred on amounts exceeding 25,000. Their account minimum to get started is $500, for which you're entitled to a diversified portfolio of low-cost index funds periodically rebalanced and enhanced with their daily tax loss harvesting services for taxable accounts. Qualifications for stock level tax loss harvesting requires an account minimum of $100,000 for the smart beta, the minimum is $500,000. Since Wealthfront is not a bank and in order to provide clients with the benefits of FDIC insurance, account cash balances are swept automatically into unaffiliated banks that furnish your deposits with FDIC insurance. FDIC insurance coverage being limited to $250,000 per bank account, Wealthfront uses additional banks to insure FDIC coverage to cash deposits of up to $1 million. Wealthfront has tax loss harvesting as part of its signature suite of investment features called Passive Plus. This takes advantage of market movements to capture investment losses. Tax loss harvesting can reduce your taxes and leave you more money to invest. Tax loss harvesting is enabled automatically for any taxable investment account. So this is not a feature that makes sense for retirement accounts as they are already tax advantaged. As to the question of whether Wealthfront is a safe investment advisor, they are registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, which means they are subject to the securities industry rules and regulations enforced by the SEC. Betterment, another robo-advisor founded in 2008, offers an annual fee of 0.25% with no minimum balance to get started under their digital plan. They offer personalized financial advice, low-cost, globally diversified investment portfolios, automatic rebalancing, and advanced tax-saving strategies, along with reliable customer service that's available seven days a week. Under Betterment's premium plan, the annual fee is 0.40%, or 40 basis points, with a $100,000 minimum balance to get started. As with the digital plan, fees in the premium plan are based on account balance. It features all the benefits of the digital plan in addition to in-depth advice and investments outside of Betterment and unlimited access to their certified financial planners for guidance on life events such as getting married, having a child, managing equity-based compensation, and retirement. As with Wealthfront, Betterment is not a bank and so it is not FDIC insured. They do offer something called Betterment Everyday Savings though, which is their version of an online bank account. Your funds are managed through the Betterment app, but handled by five partner banks, Seaside National Bank and Trust, City, Barclays, Georgia Bank and Company, and the Valley National Bank. These are invisible to you and FDIC insured up to $1 million. Betterment also offers automated tax loss harvesting. When comparing the relative strengths of these two robo-advisors, a few differences should be noted. If you're looking for no minimum deposit requirement, then Betterment is what you're looking for. Savings for college? Wealthfront offers 529 college savings accounts. More focused on retirement and socially responsible investing? Betterment is the stronger choice. Lastly, if you prefer to have access to human financial advisors, then be aware that Betterment is the only choice that offers that. As far as my personal preference, I looked into the 529 plans offered by Wealthfront as that was enticing to me. If you're unfamiliar, that's just a tax advantaged account for college savings. Currently, their fees are at 0.42 to 0.46% per year on their 529 plans. 
I decided to go with Vanguard provided through New York State as our fees are much lower. In my opinion, I prefer Betterment because of their socially responsible investing. This is an approach to investing that reduces exposure to companies that are deemed to have a negative social impact. These would be companies that profit from harming the environment or poor labor standards. In the SRI portfolio, stocks from companies like Chevron, Philip Morris, Exxon, Walmart, Wells Fargo, and Pfizer may be excluded because they are deemed to not meet these social responsibility criteria. So with the 529 plan, in my opinion, not being a great bet with robo-advisors, I give the edge to Betterment for having no minimum deposit requirements and low-cost, socially responsible investing options. At this point, I want to mention that in the description and pinned comment of this video, I have referral links for these services. My YouTube channel is my full-time source of income, and you help support my channel when you use one of my links. It is still free to you to sign up, but I'll receive compensation and appreciate your support. On a final note, with regard to safety of these robo-advisors, the only slight concern might be that they're only a decade old now, which in terms of long-term investing isn't a very long time. But even with the Department of Labor fiduciary rules fate still yet to be seen, Wealthfront and Betterment are both established SEC registered investment services at the forefront of the future investing strategies. It is my belief that in another decade, that high fee advisors will either disappear or have to lower their fees to compete with the emotionless investing robots known as robo advisors. And I mean that as a compliment. As always, thank you for watching and please like or comment with your questions and I appreciate you supporting my channel. Thanks and take care.